start, I'm going to run through those ground rules again and I'll also uh, take a roll call <clears throat> and I will jump into business. All right, it's seven o'clock. Uh, I'm gonna call the meeting to order if everybody's ready. So again, uh, oh, I got an email. Sorry. Um, I'm just gonna run down through a, a quick ground rule run. Uh, so please silence your your cell phones. Try to minimize background noise. Uh, whenever you want to make a comment, please identify yourself. Uh, it's you know helps for the minutes. Um, when not speaking, please use a mute option on the screen to eliminate background noise. If you're, if you don't do that and it's noisy, Greg can mute you. If Greg does mute you, you have to unmute yourself. Um, let anyone who's speaking finish before making comments. And if there's any audience members, please wait till the presentations are over to make comments and we will have, uh, a public comment section at the end of the meeting. So with that, I'm going to do a quick roll call, go through planning commission members first. Uh, Alex, are you here? All right. Tim? Yes. Andy? Yes. John? Present. And Steve Valley, you're here? Yes. All right. So, who do we have uh, for the Schlosser? Andy uh, Schlosser. You're the only one representing? Yes, just me. Okay. And who do we have for Fresco? Scott okay. Pastorski with Keystone. And do you hear Jeff, me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, Jeff Hammond with Fresco. Okay. Anybody else want to identify themselves for the meeting? All right. Aaron, none, David, none. David, call, David, David oh. Collingwood is here. Hi, David. Hi, Anyone David. Else? Good evening. Uh, Anthony Bogner. Hi, Tony. Thanks for joining. Jim Miller, I see you join. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. With that, uh, we're going to get started here. So first uh, item agenda is uh, approval of the minutes from the April 14th meeting. Everyone have a chance to look them over, any corrections, deletions, whatnot? I have none. This, this is Tim. I have none. John, I have none. All right. Hearing none, uh, I look for a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make such motion. I'll make a motion. Who actually made the motion? Andy. Okay, Andy made the motion. Can I get a second? John will second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, uh, so Andy Schlosser, Schlosser uh, you have the floor. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, again, my name is Andy Schlosser. I'm with Schlosser and Cross Consulting Engineers. Uh, on this particular project, I am also one of the owners. Um, well, the owner the owner is um, 3G Holdings LLC, which is um, uh, I am I am the president of that uh, uh, company slash partnership, and my siblings uh, are also owners of it. And um, this is what uh, would be my family farm. Uh, <clears throat> this this this. Uh, is basically three three existing lots that make up a little over 30 acres it's on the uh northeast side of county line road a couple thousand feet south of uh 563 or ridge road um, there is an existing driveway that comes out to county line road and it wraps back about a thousand feet to the existing house um it's a it, it looks like uh, similar to, uh, I, I believe it looks similar to the original farmhouse that was there when my father bought the property in the 70s, although that house had deteriorated pretty badly and, and they ended up rebuilding it in the, uh, in the mid 80s. Um, so they had lived there 
from I think 86 until just two years ago when they moved to Peter Becker. So um, my siblings and I have bought the property um, and we intended to develop it um, in a fashion that was, I would say similar to what my father had envisioned many years ago when he thought that he might uh, subdivide it. But um, there, there ended up being a lot more wetlands and uh, as a result, a lot of restrictions on the property than than what we had anticipated. What we're looking at here, gentlemen, is a um, is a cul-de-sac that's about nine, a little over 900 feet long. Um, it serves uh, the existing house and also seven new homes. Um, there is a detention basin down. If you're looking at the plan, uh, the overall plan, down in the right hand corner, you can see kind of a black blob. Uh, that's that's an underground structure that's uh, part of an overall detention basin system. Uh, so that's where the detention basin goes. Uh, it's it's uh, basically, um, you know, a simple eight lot subdivision, um, keeping the existing farmhouse where it is, uh, fitting the fitting the new cul-de-sac in around it. The existing house, the front of the house is actually on the north side. So the back looks out over the valley or over county line road and so when i designed this uh, the intention was to get the cul-de-sac all the way to the high side of the house so that the front yard would actually be somewhat in the front of the of the house it's a little bit of a difficult situation given that the house faces down the hill but um th that the objective was not only to have the 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 cul-de-sac be the front yard for the house but then also um, it would put public water, I, I would be able to put public water all the way to the end of the cul-de-sac and that the fire hydrant that I put at the end will be able to encompass the existing barn. And um, I kind of felt that that was important because uh, some of you may know there was a field fire a couple of years ago and uh, we had to have fire trucks run in up the driveway um, and it was just not a good situation to have a bunch of firework fire trucks up in there with no public water and um, and really being pretty far from the road. So um, this cul-de-sac solves that problem as well. So um, if you don't have any real questions about the, the plan before I get into the review letter, I guess I should just throw it out there to see if anybody has any any thoughts or comments about the plan that's in front of us. We have a review letter from Steve um, that I'd like to take a quick run through, but I thought I'd throw it out to see if you guys have any questions before we roll through that. Uh, this is Chris. I have no questions. I'll, I'll wait to see what shakes out of the review letter. Okay. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is, um, although this is public water, the um, septic systems will be on site. They'll, they'll be micro mounds. Um, you can, if you can get a good look at that picture, you can see there are large rectangles uh, near the houses, those would be the locations of the proposed septic systems. And they, uh, Andy, this is Chris. Um, the sept so what I'm seeing is you have side by side is the septic and reserve, the primary and reserve. That's correct. Okay. This is Alex. Could we zoom in on the lot to the left side of the cul de sac? This is a PowerPoint presentation. We can't zoom in or zoom out. Okay. This is, this is like the wall. Like <laughs> My question is, it, it seems like we might be getting very close to the property line with um, what I'm guessing is the reserve there. Do we have 10 feet from the property line there? Uh, yeah, we have at least 10 feet for, for all of them. Thanks. <laughs> Any, any other questions for Andy before he starts going through the review? This is Tim. I have none. <laughs> this is Andy. None. None for John. Okay. Um, and I'm going to call you Andrew, if that's all right, uh, Andy Schlosser. Yeah, that's uh, fine. We have an Andy on a planning commission. Right. I saw I'm that. Right. Andrew, just to avoid confusion. So go ahead if you want to if you want to start down the review letter. Okay, so 
um, let's pop down uh, in the first on the first page one B. Uh, Steve's up. Steve brings up the fact that there are a lot of restrictions um, on on a number of these lots. They're they're basically set off of the wetlands and steep slopes associated with the 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 ditches or creek or whatever you want to call these things. That these are kind of headwaters. Um, so he's he's suggesting that the township may want to see us uh, add some deed restrictions in in the form of an easement over top of these items. Um, I don't have a strong opinion either way on these things. So um, I, I guess I'm I'm flexible with that as far as that's concerned. I I don't know how much benefit that will bring to the township, but um, if that's something that you guys really want, then we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, before we get too far on that, what, what's your response to one uh, A? Uh, yeah, we did. We had Penn's Trail come out and do a wetland study, and uh, we'll go ahead and get the JD for that and submit the report along with the JD and the the uh, mappings prepared by Penn's Trail to Steve for review. Uh, okay. I don't really have an issue of it with that. Okay, thank you. You bet. Um, Steve, you want to chime in on B here? Hang yes, on, so just a second before we get to B. Steve, we don't have any problem if it's a what the core now calls a preliminary JD. Uh, no, we actually wrote that into the ordinance that we can, that we'll accept the preliminary JD. Gotcha, Andrew. I'm just thinking that might be a little quicker for you guys and going through the onerous process of a full blown JD. Okay, I, I'm not familiar with the with that preliminary JD, so I'll, I'll talk to Penn's Trail about that. Yeah, Paul should know about that. Yeah. And then, uh, Chris, on the, the second item, we, we did something similar. If you remember the Ridge Valley Road um, select property subdivision, that yeah. was full of woodlands and wetlands. And we established a declaration of covenants on that property that, that protected the, those natural reef resources. Right. It, it gives us a little bit more leeway down the road. Those lots in particular, we had some issues when they went to build the houses on them. The owners wanted to move things around and add to them, which they really couldn't because the building envelope was so restricted. And those easements help us control that a little bit. Right. right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we can compare these lots to the lots that, so, that select, but I don't remember the, the name of that subdivision, but I do remember that coming through our, through our office. It was a little, a little surprising. Yeah, that, this is nothing like that, but there's still areas that are supposed to be 100% protected for perpetuity. So right, so it make things a lot simpler down the road if these are are delineated on the on the deed or restricted on the deed. These areas. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, if I mean, I would I would be in favor of having that done if you guys aren't opposed to doing it. Nope, not if it makes you guys happy. <laughs> Apparently it will. <laughs> Thank you. you got it. Um, okay, so we need to we move on to the second page, um, item number two. There's a number of items we really need to talk about on this one, including uh, waiver requests, um, and it gears around the the um, the nature of the road itself, the cul-de-sac. The cul-de-sac is over the 800 foot maximum length by about 120 feet and i had originally designed this in with an island down at the lower portion um you know where where it intersects with county line road and in discussing with this with steve yesterday he pointed out the problem that the township would have to maintain that because it's going to be a public street so um i think i think with my next design it would probably be best unless you guys actually want this boulevard effect, it would be best if I removed that. Um, my my thinking was that that would that would provide uh, a separation at near the intersection in case there was an accident out there. Sometimes it's beneficial to have a separated lane. I don't know how true that is because I've never actually dealt with an accident like this uh, at an intersection with a boulevard to see if it actually helps. To, so. I think from a maintenance standpoint, um, I'm, I'm leaning towards Steve's thoughts of not having the township have to take care of an, an island. 
So okay. I guess I'll throw that out to you guys right away. The, the first comment, if you want to go through these one by one, uh, 2A is about the right of way width, and I'm going to revise that to the 52 feet that uh, that the ordinance calls for. Um, the second one is regarding the length of the cul-de-sac. Um, the third one has to, has to do with addressing the curbed island. Um, so I guess I just want to throw it out to you guys to find out what your thoughts are um, as far as that the length and the, the curb dial and effect um, to see if you actually would want that. You know, it's uh, hard. To, I can't see your faces, so I can't see you react to any of the discussion that I'm having. Steve, this is Alex. Do you think that if that curbed island was just concrete and there was really nothing to maintain there, that there would be a benefit to it? Uh, it would be more desirable as just a mountable curb island if the township had to maintain it, but it's a snow plowing issue and actually truck turning movements is easier without the island there. And if it's uh, just the only, Sorry, Steve. The only Sorry. island we have in the township is it at the entrance to, um, well, I can't think of a name now, but the age, age restricted uh, development off of Detweiler Road, and that's a private road, so we don't maintain it. Right. Is there any benefit to having that there, traffic-wise? I, I don't, I don't think for the purpose that Andy was hoping for. Okay. Um, you know what our experience with fire companies and stuff have been. When when they arrive, they close everything. Doesn't matter how many ways we try to make it better to get access around them. You know, if something happens on this street, they're going to close the whole street because they'll take up everything. So I don't think you'll get a, that benefit from it. I think from a, an aesthetic standpoint, I would, if it's going to just be concrete, I'd rather just remove it because I don't think they're very attractive. Those concrete islands makes it makes it feel like you're in the city. Yeah, I mean, I can see the see the relevance of the aesthetics there having that island, but it would have to be <laughs> aesthetically pleasing uh, if right. you weren't if you weren't going to have that. It, you know, if you're if you're doing it for aesthetics, putting concrete there would not make sense. If, there, if there's no actual traffic benefit to it, then I I would say you know if you don't want to don't want concrete, don't do it. Okay, agreed, Chris. This is Tim. I agree with that as well. This is Andy Ench. I I would agree with that also. All right. I agree. So what? Which letter was that? That was letter C. That's letter C. Okay, yeah. so you're going to eliminate the island at the entrance. Yes. Okay. If we could back up to B, um, yep. how are you guys feeling about the fact that this cul-de-sac length is is a uh, hundred between 100 and 150 feet? I don't know exactly more than than what is uh, permitted. Is, is that something that you guys are willing to recommend a waiver for? Um, this is Chris. Uh, I know the last time we had someone looking for additional length, it was substantially more than what you're asking for. Um, the first place we went was to the fire marshal to get their input on it. Um, and they they rejected the idea, but it was much longer than what you're looking for. Um, it, it's been so long since we've done a cul-de-sac. I don't, I don't have any recollection of uh, anything that we've waived, any length, length uh, increase that we've waived in the past. Uh, Steve, I guess I would defer to you again and get your thoughts on that. Uh, well, you, I think you're correct. We've done very few cul-de-sacs um, of any length. Uh, you know, we had said, we, we had had a lot of back and forth conversation when we redid the ordinance about what the right length was and what the number of lots were. You know, we, and that's somewhere we came with that balance of 800 feet and and, and 12 lots. So this is a little bit longer, but it has less lots on it, which is a plus. Um, I mean, otherwise I, I don't, I don't have any particular objection to this length and this, this layout. I do think the fire company is, uh, we, you know, they have to reach out to them anyway, but we should get comment from them on the, uh, on the road. Andrew, I'm just looking to see if there was a way to shorten that up. And it looks like the, the limitation becomes, how far you can move lot five towards lot four to give lot six more access. 
and I, from what I'm seeing, it looks like the wetland buffer is what's causing your problem there. Yes. Yes. If we could just cut out those wetlands there, I could do this uh, a lot differently. <laughs> Start draining. <laughs> I don't think you should have had your dad work on that years ago. <laughs> I, don't think, I, I told my, well, so we got this, we had, ironically enough, we had the wetlands done right after it rained for like 18 months straight. I don't know if you remember that, but we went like a year and a half where it rained like every two or three days. And I was shocked at how far out those wetlands went. But, you know, it is, a delineation is a delineation. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, before you get the uh, preliminary JD, you might want to revisit that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Maureen's going to move because I asked her up front. I said, are you serious? It's out in the middle of the field. And she said it is what it is. So I don't think she's going to move. This is uh, this is Tim. Is there any snow storage area uh, provided at the end of the cul-de-sac? Is there, has so that been... I left room for it, but I did not label it as such. And um, I think that's one of the comments here in Steve's letter that, that we will be you know, labeling up a, a specific area for snow storage. Okay, thank you. you bet. Um, this is Chris, getting back to the, the, the length. I, I don't think I would have a problem with Steve. Steve's correct, when we redid the ordinance, it was it was a lot of give and take as to what number would actually would be the, the right number. Um, what are you adding a little over 100 feet to this? Is that what I saw? Yes. Um, I don't think I'd have a problem with that, you know, provided that the, the uh, fire guys don't have an issue with it. Fire marshal. Okay. I will check with the fire marshal then to make sure that's not a problem. Is there any input from the other members? This is Tim. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it. Chris, it's Alex, N nor do I. Andy Encha, I don't have any further input. Do you have an option of moving the cul-de-sac closer to County Line Road and just making the driveways longer to each of the properties? Um, possibly. I'd have to check. I think the, the restriction comes in the, the frontage of the lots. Um, but I might be, I, I will have to check into that. I would think, though, any change will end up being nominal in, in the length. You know, if you cut 50 feet off the road, does that really make a whole lot of difference? Um, True. True. And, and just as a reminder for the other Planning Commission members that that other project with the long cold sack street will be back next month. Uh, so we'll be tackling this question again next month. John, to address your issue, I think that the problem has become the uh, existing outbuilding on the the main lot and in the wetlands on the other lot so i don't know that there's much they can do to shorten that yeah i don't think i'll be able to even shorten it 15 feet uh, it won't be there won't be a lot of room to move all right and our ordinance doesn't really allow for for flag lots off of a cul-de-sac where you know any development that has new streets in it so to shorten it up and turn the back lots into flag lots is not an option either. Okay. Steve, this is Chris. What's the uh, maximum uh, amount of lots allowed on a cul-de-sac? I believe it's 12. 12, okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, we're we're under by a quarter. Yeah, and I think the length was sort of based off of what the lot width is and for 12 lots. It got us back to about 800 feet. Right. Okay. All right. Well, there's no further issue on that. Let's uh, let's say say that the planning commission will support it as long as the fire marshal does. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Uh, you want to go to D? D. What was D? All the Okay. So uh, D addresses um, the requirement for uh, sidewalk, and um, I guess I should say that that the the cross section of the cul-de-sac includes curbing, but 
Uh, I'm not showing sidewalk at this point because uh, there wasn't really any other sidewalk in the area. I did include it in my stormwater management calculations so that in the event that you were to come back and put sidewalk in, it wouldn't be a problem as far as the detention basin is concerned. Um, so I, I think, you know, uh, it, it's my understanding through Steve that um, I would have to pay a fee in lieu of the sidewalk. So I guess it would, you know, fall to you guys, um, you know, as to the desirability of having sidewalk there. The one thing I, this is Steve, one thing I always like to bring up, especially on a cul-de-sac street is school buses won't go back there. So generally the kids have to walk out to the corner and it's one, one issue for sidewalk. This is Tim. I, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, similar to the uh, Kratz uh, development in the sense of that they're proposed on the, like with a deed restriction, I believe that they're going to be their future sidewalk. Is that what I was reading? Well, not a deed restriction, but it, it's meant for a little bit different here. That that's on the that front's on the PennDOT road, and we were reserving the right to install that sidewalk later. Uh, in this case, the sidewalk would be within the township right of way, so we would have every right to put sidewalk on this road without any other easements. Okay. Uh, so I don't know that we need that restriction the way we did it on Kratz, but. Um, I mean, it could certainly be a note on the plan if you don't want it now, but I want to advise people that there may be sidewalk later. What uh, what's the like the most recent call to sack that we that we've done, and did we have sidewalks in it? I live on a call to sack with sidewalks. <laughs> I was going to say in the development area, all those streets have sidewalks on them. Right. Um, right. Outside of the development area, we have Anna Lane, but that's mostly commercial. And we really haven't built any streets in a long time in the town, Ingram, so believe it or not. Ingram Way is right down the street. I don't think that has any sidewalks. Yeah, well, they weren't. <laughs> yeah. That really yeah, that wasn't public. That was the there. That's the whole long story. This is Andy Encha. I'm in favor of sidewalks. I. Uh, I'm leaning that way myself. This is Chris. Um, I think I think you know the 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 school bus issue is is a big one. Um, nobody wants to send their kids down the street if they can send them down sidewalks for sure. Right. Right. Would, uh, would you, and you, say you could? Go ahead, Steve. I I'm sorry. I was I was just gonna say, you know, for this case, since most of the frontage on the on the say the north side of the road is all lot the existing lot eight. You know, you probably could get away with just doing sidewalk on one side from the cul-de-sac, you know, from the last driveway back in the cul-de-sac down the southern side to the out the county line road. I was just going to suggest the same thing. And then and then we have uh, people for, for lot one, they would have to cross the street to use the sidewalk. Is there yeah. something that's correct? To write, you know, put that in the plan and, and have future sidewalk, some type of writing on the plan for future sidewalk on lots uh, one and eight. Cause that might be, that might be a, a, a sales killer or um, an advantage to have it on both sides as at, from a sales standpoint. Steve, would there be any advantage to showing like a, a striped area for a, like a pedestrian crosswalk painted on the road? Uh, or a mid-block crossing like that, we could. I mean, you, you, you could stripe it and put two signs up. We, we did that um, right off of Climber Road. I forget the name of that little uh, John Garris cul-de-sac there next to Providence. That right. has a little painted crosswalk in, back the, in the middle of the road. And this isn't a situation – it's not like, like – uh, road improvements where if they don't put the sidewalks in, they get, they have to pay a fee in lieu of. Is that accurate? Oh, yes, it is. It is. Okay. <laughs> it is. No. It's a requirement. So it's a contribution okay. without it. Chris, it always is. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, no matter what. 
Uh, That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Instead of a concrete sidewalk, could you put in like a paved walking slash bike path? Got the county line road. Uh, you're you're asking me if it can be done. It can be done. Absolutely. I don't. That wouldn't meet the requirements of your code, though. Generally, generally, bikers are required to ride in the street, um, and people walk on the sidewalk off the off the street. So. Um, I think I, I, I'm willing to go with whatever you guys would like to see out there. Quite frankly, um, I don't see a lot of I don't see a lot of. Oh, I shouldn't say that. This generally, when you're doing a shared uh, bike path type of thing, it goes somewhere. Um, in this case, you're really not going to have that. And. Yeah. And this is the I, I think you know if with a with a partial waiver you could allow a blacktop path instead of a, a sidewalk. But if you did it narrow like the sidewalk, it's actually harder to pave it, and it's um, sometimes long term a, a blacktop path like that is a little bit of a maintenance nightmare once you get down the road, uh, more so than concrete is. It's clearly not going to last as long as concrete is. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, this is Tim. I, I would be comfortable with the one side. I mean, as long as you have uh, access on, on one side of the road, I think that would be sufficient. But with, like you said, Chris, you know, having it on the print that, you know, potentially there would be sidewalk on the other side. Right. I'd agree with that. This is Alex. Yeah, so I don't know how you'd write that in on a plan. So I'll show I'll show the sidewalk to be built uh, on the one side, and I'll have it wrap around the cul-de-sac bulb, and then right. I'll put a note on the plan that says that the uh, remainder of the sidewalk on along the cul-de-sac would be installed at uh, should the township request it in the future, and it'll, it'll say at the property owner's expense, unless I'm contributing to the township, in which case. If I'm contributing to the township, then the township would be on the hook to build it in the future if they wanted to. Right. Okay. That's a discussion for township staff and, and the owner. Okay. How we did well, and uh, handle fees or costs. Well, it sounds like the planning commission is an agreement is in agreement to do something along those lines. So Okay. Why don't we move forward? Okay. That, Steve, did I do I remember from our conversation that we wanted to talk about the width of the cartway um, because of on street parking capability? Uh, yeah, we should talk about that. Uh, the ordinance is a little bit gray on the on the larger lots. Uh, the, the plan is proposed with a 20, 28 foot wide cartway with curb, which which is the, the standard requirement. But there's then a caveat in the ordinance that says if the township wants parking, uh, on either side of the road, it, it, the road could be widened or, or conversely, no parking signs installed. Um, these are larger lots. There's plenty of parking on the property. The question always becomes spillover parking on a road like this. When somebody has a party or a picnic, people end up parking on the road anyway. Um, I, I don't know anyone's thoughts on parking. I guess my two cents is if we get sidewalk on one side, Maybe put a parking lane on the opposite side. I don't know if I'm in <clears throat> lot uh, lots on that side, lot eight, or or the front lot that I want parking on my side because they're having a picnic on their side. <laughs> yeah. And just one other point on there. I think with the with the 28 foot wide street and potentially infrequent parking, um, 28 is probably wide enough to have parking on one side. You would still have even with an eight foot parking lane, you'd have 20 feet to get past. What's uh, 
Uh, Rosecliff. Is that 28? You know? Rosecliff. Uh, it's at least 28. I, I, I don't recall because that has those uh, parallel parking, or not the parallel, but the perpendicular parking lots. It doesn't have parking on the main section of the road. Yeah, but we have relatives in there. And we end up at Easter and some other holidays there, and there, and people park on that road, and it's not an issue if they're parking on one side. It, it gets tight if they park on both sides, and you can, right. you, know, you can put up signs to stagger that to avoid having having parking on both sides across from one another. Um, I think that's what they do there. Well, I, I I think I think if you if the planning commission agreed to parking on one side, we would have them. Uh, install signs on the other side so ultimately the township could enforce it. Right. Yeah, I mean that being said, I think I'm fine with the with the courtway with at 28. It, you know, you got you got big lots here. Then I mean, how close are the houses to the well proposed houses to the road? Looking at feedback. Yeah, so you got plenty of room for parking in front of garages and whatnot. This is Tim. I'm fine with that. This is Alex. I agree. Andy. Uh, this is Steve again. We all agreed to the 28 foot width, but did we agree to have parking on one side and posted on the on the other side? This is Tim. Yeah, I'm fine with that. It's John, I'm okay. Yeah, I, th I think that's a nice compromise. If you got a sidewalk on one side, I think the other side could take the overfill parking. Okay, so the parking yeah. signs are going on the right-hand side of the cul-de-sac as we look at the plan, then. Is that what you're saying? The no parking? Correct. Least... Yeah, sidewalk, yeah, sidewalk goes on the right-hand side. The, uh, the part, no parking signs also go on the right-hand side. So if you park, you get out and walk across the street and get onto the sidewalk or walk up your the, the driveway that to the house you're going to. Correct. Okay. Yeah, this is Chris. I agree with that. Alex, I agree. This is John again. I I think that it makes more sense to put the sidewalk on the same side as the parking. So that somebody getting out of the passenger side. Can get out, get out onto a sidewalk and not get out in the mud. Yeah, this is Tim. I would agree with that. I would keep the parking on the same side as the sidewalk. I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but <clears throat> again, that goes back to my first comment about lot one and lot eight. You know, they're having a picnic across the street. Well, I don't want them parking on my side. You know what I mean? Like, this is Alex. I think the reality is they're going to park on the side with the sidewalk, no matter what we say. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Yeah. So hmm. I would, I would say this is Timmy. I would say, part, you know, uh, sidewalk on the right side heading in, <clears throat> and then no parking on the left side. John, yes, I'd, uh, I'd like to uh, change my vote on that. I'm thinking about another relative's house where they don't have sidewalk and you get out and you step in a, in a wet ditch every time we go there. Um, so yeah, I think I would agree with that. Get out of the car and you got a sidewalk right there instead of somebody's yard. This is Andy Inch. I'll, I'll concur with that also. Parking on the same side as the sidewalk. And I've changed my vote as well, Chris. Okay. Good point, John. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so you got that, Andrew? Yes, I have direction on that. <laughs> Good. Okay. I'm glad we can finally give you some. What's that? I said I'm glad we can finally give you some. There you go. Um, uh, e is a comment regarding the uh, intersection with County Line Road. Um, show, I need to show on the plans um, that we have adequate sight distance. That's something I, I showed horizontally, but I didn't. That I didn't show vertically, but I will put that on the plans. Um, F is um, the fact that I need to get a PennDOT approval, and, and I think 
once I make the revisions uh, based on tonight's meeting, uh, I'll be ready to go to PennDOT and the Conservation District if, if that's okay with you guys um, so that we can start incorporating their comments in as well. Um, item G. Can I can interrupt you there, Andy? Andrew, sorry. Yeah. Um, I guess the only thing we didn't we didn't talk about, and I think it's buried in one of these comments, is is whether or not the township feels there should be any extra road improvements along County Line Road, other than just at the intersection, the way you have it shown on the plan currently. Yeah. Or in the alternate, defer to PennDOT and let them. Yeah, I, so so what I did for this project is um, there are there are a number of, of trees. There's a tree row right along County Line Road, and in the area from from uh, shall we say from the on the plan a little bit left of the the new cul-de-sac down to the detention basin area. Um, those those trees I've removed and cleared out the area so you have adequate sight distance. And I put in a swale along County Line Road to make sure that um, the, the uh, side of County Line Road was adequately draining because there really isn't much of any swale there now. So uh, I have the only improvements that I'm showing along County Line Road at this point is this roadside swale. Um, and then we're putting new street trees in. So um, that's, I'm not proposing any road widening along County Line Road at this point only because there hasn't been any road widening up and down the street. So uh, I figured we would just leave it as it is. Um, but obviously the improvements like things like widening curb and sidewalk would be part of your ordinance. So I would need a waiver for that. Correct, you'd need to ask for a waiver if the planning commission was generally in agreement. And, and Andrew, just again, to be clear, I, I might touch on it later, but the way this is configured along the frontage, the, the roadway actually comes out at more or less the high point along the property frontage. That's correct. The drainage, the drainage goes either way away from the, the new intersection. That's correct. Yeah, this is really the only place that uh, we can stick the cul-de-sac in unless I violate the um, the wetland setback down in the right hand corner where the detention basin is now. I had looked in, in sketch, when I put a sketch together, I looked at uh, putting the driveway, uh, the cul-de-sac access all the way down there, but I didn't have adequate sight distance down in that area. Plus I was violating the, the, the setback from wetlands. Sure, and for, and for what it's worth, this would be similar to Kratz where um, they did do drainage improvements along the road, but no road widening or other improvements. What, what did we do down at Ingram's Way there? Coming up? That there's just a wide return radiuses and little little flares there. Right. Okay. I think there might be a widening at the uh, right hand side. Approaching Ingram's way as you're coming up the hill. That's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. PennDOT doesn't allow those anymore. They want the radius returns to be larger and no turning lanes because they feel that people don't understand how to use a deceleration lane properly. So they no longer want to see them. Hmm. I'm not saying that I wouldn't propose that if you guys want that. Um, but PennDOT's preference is to not have them anymore. And I'd agree. People don't know how to use them. <laughs> All right. Um, so we don't know where I remember reading something about that in the review, but I don't know where it was. Yeah, I can't find it off the top <laughs> well, either. When we get to it, we'll make notes of it. Um, but I mean, does anybody have any any strong input on this? I'd say let PennDOT call the shots because they're the ones who are going to do it anyhow. It's Alex. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would defer no, to PennDOT. It's, it's the next comment on the next page. Yeah, it's That's number three. I was just going to say, this is Tim. It's number three. It's the next comment. So. 
<laughs> All right, so let's let's finish up this page, and we'll we'll hit that when we get to the top of the next page. And okay, that's good. Uh, comment uh, G is regarding the street name of Schlosser Road. I'm not married to it. I just threw it on there for fun. So if you guys uh, if you guys would rather it be named something else, I'm you know open to it. But I will probably if you guys don't have a problem with the road name, I will probably throw that out to the roadmaster to to find out if that's good with them. Uh, this is Chris. I don't have a problem with it. It might have to be lane or something like that rather than road. I'm pretty flexible. <laughs> I have no problem with it, Alex. Andy Encha, no, no problem. It's John, I'm fine. This is Tim. I'm fine with that. Okay. So, um, the last comment on this page is, is uh, Jim, uh, Steve just allowing himself the option to comment some more later. Uh, on to page three, uh, this is where we address the, the waiver request for county line road improvements. Um, so I don't, I, I, I guess what I'm hearing is that you guys are okay with what I have shown unless PennDOT wants something different. That would, this is Chris, that would be my take on everyone's input. Okay. Yeah, this is Tim. I'm, that's what I believe. Andy Unchef agreed. Alex agreed. John agreed. Okay, thank you. All right, so number four. Four, um, <clears throat> this is a request for me to um, remove the, the waiver's request from the plan and, and put it in um, a note, a letter form, which we'll take care of. Uh, the fifth one is a waiver request because I have some, uh, bends in the property lines. If we take a look at, um, lots, the lot line between four and five, and then lot eight has a, a number of lot eight is the leftover land. Shall we, shall we call it, um, and is shaped the way it is because, uh, the existing driveway that wraps down and will now connect into the new cul-de-sac um, along with, you know, it was already an existing irregularly shaped lot. So um, this basically, this basically wraps around all the wetlands and uh, the existing driveway and the existing house and barn is, is kind of what's driving the shape of what's left over. Um, lot between the lot line between four and five, I started the lot lines perpendicular. Uh, the lot between the line between four and five gets back into the area where the wetlands are, and it breaks and is parallel to the upper line, the upper property line for lot five. So that's why that break is there. And, and if you guys would prefer me to remove that, I can shift that property line down some and straighten that line out. So I think that would leave that up to you, gentlemen, if you have a preference. Um, how often have we looked the other way on the regular lot lines? This is Steve. We do it regularly. I, um, I know the, ordinance, the ordinance requirement was really established to, to give us some teeth if there's really crazy lots being proposed just to get, you know, jam another house in somewhere. Right, these right. these seem pretty regular. Yeah. Andrew, this yeah. is Alex. Is there any problem with straightening out the um, north lot line on lot three between three and four? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the that's the. I was thinking that was four and five, but that is um, that is the lot line I was talking about. I can straighten that out if if you'd like. But Andrew, this is Steve. Were you going to keep it? perpendicular to the right away and push it all the way back to the back property line yeah i would shift you know out along the out along the new cul-de-sac i would shift that property line down towards county line road so that it's a straight line to the back uh without okay. encroaching on those um septic system areas okay i i would that that's fine i was just going to say lot four has a lot of restrictions on it. There's only so much buildable area. So I'd hate to see you cut off some of the back, you know, yard area of lot four, if you didn't have to. Yeah. I, th I think I held, 
I, what I did, I think as I, I um, set that property line, like the, what I th is the required width, I think it's 150 feet. I think I set that down about 150 feet, maybe a little bit more to, to have it, the back part of that be like a regular lot. Um, and I figured the, the owner of lot three probably wouldn't spend a lot of time back in the, the marshy wooded area um and so it really wouldn't matter to him whether or not he had a bend in his property back there or not so i can go either way it just really depends on what you guys feel is better andrew this is alex i, I agree with you i think that makes a lot of sense based on your explanation okay this is tim i don't have any problem with the lots the way they are this is andy yeah john fine with it as drawn the lot lines okay this is John. I agree. All right, this is Chris. I'm I'm on board. Okay. Uh, the next comment then is regarding uh, gang mailboxes. I I probably wouldn't recommend a gang mailbox for um, properties this of this size. But if you guys are seeing a lot of that and that's what you want, then I'll take that to the postmaster. This is Steve. Yeah, we, we are seeing a lot. They they want to put gang metal boxes everywhere now. Okay. Um, it depends on the postmaster, which particular post office, but please verify with them so we don't have to struggle with it later on. Will do. Hey, uh, Andrew, getting back to number five, this is Chris. Uh, so you're going to provide a, a waiver request for the irregular lot lines then? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay so number seven i guess next yes um so this has to do with the the way that uh you folks accept right-of-way dedication as an easement rather than actual taking of of the property um and i don't have a problem with addressing this i think this may become an issue with pendot where they may want to take some of the right-of-way here so i won't know that until i get to pendot but um, you know, I'm willing to work this out with, um, you know, whatever your ordinance requires and, and you guys want me to do on this. Okay. Uh, comment eight, I'm, I'm willing to go along with, um, I think the, the, uh, the, the finding of the existing monuments just didn't show up on the plan. So I'll need to, to make note of those and then I'll, uh, put down concrete monuments where it's required. Uh, mine is regarding the recreation land, and I guess that there's a um, a donation to be made to um, some sort of park and rec fund. I guess I, I don't um, I, I don't know that it's appropriate to put a recreational area of 1,400 square foot on this track. It's just it just seems kind of silly. I'd agree with that, Alex. So you're, you're proposing the make a uh, donation or a contribution to whatever fund that's supposed to go into. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I think that would be appropriate unless you guys feel otherwise. I, I, I certainly don't. This okay. is Tim. I'm fine with that. Okay. Andy, I'm okay with it as well. Okay. John, I agree. Okay, so next up is item 10, and it's uh, stormwater management issues. And uh, Tim and I, have, uh, Tim, Steve and I have talked about this um, a little bit, and there still are some, some issues that I have to work out when I do the uh, design work for um, the conservation district. And there may be some difficulty in getting to the township's requirement of uh, getting the impervious surface ratios all the way, um, how do I say this? The, the existing, getting the existing impervious to be considered as meadow. And I may need a partial waiver on that because the improvements that uh, exist are really close to the zoning restrictions, the setback from the wetlands. Um, and I don't really have room to put any detention basin facilities on that side of the cul-de-sac. So I am, I, and, I, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the stormwater from the existing improvements 
to the far side of the cul-de-sac into that detention basin that's there. So uh, I'm going to do as much as I can, and um, and I'm hoping that it's enough that um, Steve will be okay with it and that you guys will be okay with it. So uh, I may be back for a partial waiver on some of these stormwater management issues. Uh, Steve, on that point, um, we have on, on some occasions allowed the waiver that Andrew's asking for, but, uh, and the waiver basically uh, would allow him to comply with the NPDES requirements, which is a, is a 20% conversion of existing features to, or existing impervious to meadow instead of 100%. Uh, in this case, I, I wouldn't have an objection to that. Um, all right. Okay. Do you, do you guys want to go through all these stormwater comments one by one, or is it okay if I work these out with Steve uh, in the future after I get through or get into uh, the design for the conservation district? Give me a minute here. <laughs> And, and while you're going through that, I would just add that I'm not going to be asking for a recommendation for preliminary approval this evening, gentlemen. I'm just just here to get direction from you. Yeah, you are going to get it anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, Steve, is there any reason for us to go through these as a planning commission? No, no, there's nothing else that's a plan, quote unquote planning issue. Okay. Uh, so you want to get to 11 then? Uh, yeah, 11. So uh, this is discussion regarding the um, the landscaping plan. Uh, I am going to be asking for uh, a couple of waivers on the amount of trees. I don't know. Do you, do you have um, do we need to bring up a slide? Have you guys have you guys had a chance to look at the landscaping plan or can we bring up the slide that says aerial plan with landscaping? Is Greg still there? I'm here. Um, I did the five that you gave me. So Sherry, if you want to go to the next one, the next one, is that it? No, nope. keep going. Keep going. This is Alex. Go. It looks like it's sheet 14. Yeah. I only got, I got five, five on this one. Well, yeah, this is, this is something I just threw together for uh, tonight's meeting so that the site would be all in one picture rather than spread across uh, two different plans. Uh, but I think you can see the uh, proposed trees that I have in here. There's a lot of street trees that run around the cul-de-sac and down County Line Road to fill in the gaps. Uh, and then we have a number of replacement trees. Um, and one of the comments in here is is regarding uh, how I calculated the the um, replacement trees, but uh, you can see that I tried to basically I tried to use those replacement trees and plant them in along the property lines so that the property lines would have uh, some definition to them. Um, so I guess uh, if we want to, I think I'm I think I'm still short about 110 trees. So uh, I can squeeze a couple more in here uh, if you guys want to see a lot more. Um, I guess I'd just throw it out to you guys to see if you're comfortable with what's there now. Um, I, I think as, as always, um, what we don't plant, we end up making a contribution to the township to plant somewhere else. So uh, whether you want them here or somewhere else, I kind of, I guess I would be willing to leave that up to you guys. Is there, is there any hardship as to why you wouldn't be able to plant more? I can plant more. I, there's just a lot of trees out there. Right. <laughs> I'm just uh, wondering if we tie this back to stormwater a little bit, if we could uh, maybe discuss with Parkyoma Watershed Conservancy, if there'd be something they'd want to see in the way of um, repairing buffer plantings or something like that that we might do instead of trees. Are you suggesting that to do riparian uh, plantings on this property or elsewhere in the township? 
I was thinking maybe on this one just to help ameliorate some of the stormwater issues. We can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Any other input from other members or Steve? I don't have a particular input. I, I think I need to to talk to work with Andy to make sure that he, he did do the calculation right. And I'm not suggesting that it would be even more trees. I'm saying it, it may be somewhat less trees, but uh, there's a, I think it's a, a, there's a lot of trees that aren't shown. It's not a matter of just fitting another 10 or 20 trees on the property. I think it's upwards of a hundred potentially trees. Uh, so I don't know that you'd find a whole, you know, place to put that many trees with and still have a place to build a house. Right. <laughs> but, but we, we could talk about that a little bit more. And we always, we've, we've taken contributions in the past for partial tree issues. Right. Okay. This is Tim. I'm comfortable with whatever uh, Steve is uh, willing to support. Uh, this is Chris. Well, well said. I agree with Tim. Andy Unshin, no, no, no comments. That's fine. It's John, I agree. This is Alex. Like I said, that 130 more trees on this seemed to be kind of ridiculous. That's why I was trying to find another option. Right. And I, I think that's something worth looking into, what you have suggested. Okay. Well, I, I think I'll leave that with, I'll talk to Steve about making sure I have the calculation uh, correct. And then um, I will try to, to, plant um, more trees to help with the stormwater situation. And then if there's still some uh, more, then I guess we'll be making the contribution. Yeah, good enough. Okay, uh, if we move on to 12 on the next page, um, has to do with us doing uh, getting approval for the erosion sediment control and the MPDS approval. And we'll start working on that um, after tonight's meeting. Okay. The Comment 13 um, is a discussion on um, the fact that we have public water on here. And at this point, I'm proposing that all the new houses would get the public water and the, the existing farmhouse would uh, remain on the well. Um, we'll be running that through Telford Borough Authority for their approval as well. Yeah, this is Steve. I was going to say, did Mark... <laughs> comment on that yet what's that I, that's what i was just going to ask if mark fournier commented on on that issue of keeping the well for the farmhouse yet he, he, he has not uh he knows that this project is coming but he hasn't seen the design so um you know uh, with the next submission that we make here or the next set of plans that we put together we'll make that submission to the borough authority as well andrew has that well seen any uh any issues from the quarry no, my father has not said anything about that. Um, he's he's never had a problem with that well. Now, his well might be deeper than the others. I don't know how deep that well is, but um, you know, I think when we put that water line in, we'll have a um, we'll have them put a tap in for that lot in case it is ever needed. But um, you know, there was only two of them living there most of those years uh, that it the house was there, so. You know, if somebody were to move in with a, you know, a family of four or five, they might see a different situation. So we want to have that tap available in case it's eventually needed. Right. That makes sense. Chris, this is Alex. I think you're close enough to the top of the hill. You might actually be in the diabase geology as opposed to the um, Brunswick or Loctong where the, the quarry is. So they may be on a completely different aquifer. I'm nodding my head like I know what you were talking about. Yeah, I am too, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Sound impressive. <laughs> I'll be sure to put that in my report to the supervisors. <laughs> Seven years of college, what can I say? There you go. <laughs> You're going to have to write that down for me. Yes. Yeah, how do you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. So, basically, uh, 13 is a will comply. Yeah, so 14 is a will comply as well. It's a discussion regarding the need for the sewage facilities planning modules. Penn's Trail is going to be handling all that work for us. So, um, you know, we'll keep moving that, the ball forward on that one as well. 
Uh, 15 is a requirement for a, a summary, a narrative summary of the development, which I guess I missed, so I'll be including that. Um, 16, um, apparently I missed the, the requirement to notify the adjoining property owner, so we'll be getting those out shortly. Uh, item 17 we do need to talk about that is uh, regarding street light installation and uh, I guess I need some direction as to what what the township is looking for these days as far as street lights are concerned I'm not proposing anything by the way okay got an answer for that, Alex? this is Steve and quite often on our streets we've done minimal lighting basically intersections and 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 coldest and the cul-de-sacs uh we have we don't light up the streets like you know say percasy borough does uh, but you know it's subject to the planning commission thinks well, this is tim i think we had said previously about like post lights like at the end of the drives right uh that was the option we did in uh Kratz. yes yes All right. Yeah, I think we we do that. We offer that as a solution for. Um, yeah, this is Alex. Think about ways. Alex, I I didn't hear what you said. Alex, could you? I was just asking if there would be lighting requirements for the driveways, but the the post lights might might address that yeah we have i don't have a problem with that we can we can do we can propose a post light with a photo cell that it would auto automatically turn on uh at dusk so you know that's something that we often do as a solution uh and certainly i'd be willing to do that in this case andrew I, like my feed cut out on me there would somebody suggest that we did uh post lights at the in a driveway or something to that effect yeah i think steve mentioned that that on kratz we did that um a post light and i think typically when we do a post light uh, when we show post lights on the plans we include a requirement for a photo cell so that the light automatically comes on okay I, I, uh, this I, is steve i guess the, my only question then is would you still want a street light at the intersection out at County Land Road? What do we have down at Ingram's Way? Again, I don't know if there's anything down there. Off I the believe there's I nothing there. I don't it think was there. in the beginning. Is it a, a requirement? Well, the, the ordinance require street lights we've always done minimal lighting and waived right. the full requirement and I, i'm just looking at it as a you know safety sure issue Where, where's uh the drive from from lot two i mean well i guess lot one on the other side would be the closest to the road Correct. I'm sorry. Can you ask that again? The the, the driveway for lot one would be the would be the closest driveway to County Line Road. Correct. If you if you said lot one, then yes, lot one and lot two line up to each other. Uh, they are the two closest to the road. Steve, have we ever done anything like spotlighting on a, a sign for the entrance, like a? A subdivision name sign or something like that, as opposed to street lighting. No, we haven't. I'm not saying you can't, but we have not. We actually we don't really have monument signs anywhere, except maybe Wellington Village has one, but that's an HOA sign. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> huh. I mean, I'd like to keep safety at the forefront but i don't want to be overbearing about it um i'm just trying to think what other what other developments we have you know where we have lighted entrances like this i 
Is there a utility pole near the entrance? Uh, there is. I don't know exactly where it is relative to the relative to the uh, cul-de-sac, but there is one pretty close, I believe. I assume you're going to feed all these houses with un underground electric service? Yes. So you'll need a takeoff pole at some point for that? Yes. Maybe put a light on that. Hmm. I can do that. I mean, depending on that existing pole's proximity to the intersection would be whether it was yes, worthwhile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and as we That's just said, you're going to have the underground electric. So to put another little boulevard style, we don't put big street lights up. We use those, generally use those boulevard style, you know, 12 foot tall pole, right. poles with the lights on. There's a, there's a house across the street. Um, is that something that that we should be I should be discussing with that property owner as to whether or not they want a street light there? I would imagine they wouldn't. But they're in Montgomery County. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> whether that means anything or not. But. Just talk to the I, folks who are affected by the Naceville. Uh I don't think it's directly across from the house from what I'm looking at. The the cul-de-sac? Right. No, it's not. But I think yeah. that pole I think that pole is between the cul-de-sac and the driveway that serves that house. Oh, an existing pole. Yeah, there's an exist there is the existing poles are on the other side of the street from this development. So we're gonna have to run, you know, when we bring it in, I don't know if if well, this is interesting because it's a county line. I wonder if Pico or PPL serves. I'm not sure. We might have a we might have a break here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do some research on the electricity here to see exactly what what how this is going to be served. I didn't think about that before this discussion. Um, I mean, in I mean any, my 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 recommendation, if you want that, is. To to have a light at the intersection and then the driveway posts at the rest of the driveways. I was just going to say, if it's just a 12 foot boulevard lamp, I, I would suggest doing that myself. Okay. This is Tim. I'm comfortable with that as well. Yeah. Okay. Alex, I agree. Okay. Um, Moving on to 18 is um, a develop is for the developer uh, development financial security agreement, which we're agreeable to. Um, and of course, when we get when we get close to the end, we'll prepare an opinion of cost. And then the final comment is um, Steve allowing himself a chance to uh, review me at his will. All right. So would you run out of time, Steve? Uh, in part, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't much of a slowdown and made everything harder. Right. But uh, I mean, some of some of these road issues and things had had to be resolved too. It's not a lot of sense of picking apart a plan and then changing half the details on the plan anyway. Right. All right. So. You're going to clean this up and come back with your waiver request and narrative and everything uh, we're suggesting you have to do? Yes. Um, and I'd like to get the ball rolling with Penda, and I think I need to have some sort of letter from the township um, stating that you're comfortable with the layout as it is. So I'm going to be requesting that Greg prepare something to that effect. I don't know that the Planning Commission makes that decision as to whether or not they're ready to release it, but... Um, I will be looking for looking for some sort of letter from the township saying it's okay for me to go to PennDOT. Uh, this is Steve. Generally, yeah, we we handle that as an as an administrative issue. If you if you have a PennDOT plan ready or almost ready, 
I'd like you to forward that to us and then we'll, you know, we'll just reference that in our, in our letter. Otherwise we could give you a letter saying we reviewed the subdivision or are in the process of reviewing the subdivision. Yeah. I, I haven't started working on the PennDOT plan. I would, I would do that, you know, with this round of revisions based on this letter and our comments here. Um, and I would, you know, when I make the changes for that uh, plan set, then I'll, you know, add in all the PennDOT required stuff and the conservation district required stuff and um, move off to those agencies as well as uh, Telford Borough Authority for their for their review. So everybody gets a shot at the next set of plans. Okay. Well, this is Steve. When, when you're ready to go to PennDOT, um, email the, the township manager and myself and, and ask for that letter and we'll take care of it. Okay. Sounds good. I appreciate it. All right. Okay. Andrew, do you need anything else from us? No, if you guys are, are uh, without any more comments, I'll leave you to the rest of your meeting. All right, anybody have any other questions or comments for Andrew? John, I'm this good. Is, <clears throat> this is Tim. I do not. Good luck, Andrew. This yes. is Alex. No comment. Andy Enchin, not at this time. All right, gentlemen. Uh, Hold on. I, I'm assuming, Greg, you didn't get any comments emailed to you? No, I did not get any comments emailed. I forgot about that. Uh, okay. Well, Andrew, thank you. Uh, good luck. We'll see you when you get it together. Thank you. I appreciate your time, gentlemen, and I'll be seeing you in a couple months, I would imagine. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving forward, uh, next on the agenda is Fresco. If you want to jump in here. Sure. Uh, just confirm everyone here is okay, correct? Yes. This is Scott Scott from Keystone. Yep. Yes, I can hear you. Good. Great. Thank you. Um, well, good evening. And um, just to follow up, just to recap, um, we were before the Planning Commission in, at the March meeting. And um, we went over our, our plans, uh, had received some very uh, good suggestions and some questions from the, from the Planning Commission. Um, and in addition to that, we had indicated several waivers that we'll go through in a minute in the letter. And, um, and also the other you know, big picture things here, there's quite a few items of cleanup on the plan, although I don't believe we identified anything major on the plan that would be a showstopper. Uh, there was a, a, a fair amount of um, detailed comments that we had to go through and clean up. And so I think um, I think we made significant progress on the plan, but you can certainly be the judge of that. Uh, and I think um, to move forward here, Steve's letter is probably as good an outline as anything to cover all the issues we talked about. I think he did a good job memorializing even the, the Planning Commission's comments. They're, they seem to be contained in the letters. So unless anybody has any uh, initial um, questions or comments, I was just planning to go through the letter one by one. And some of these we can just gloss over quickly. Others might warrant a little bit more discussion. Uh, that, that sounds like a good plan to me. So I'll go ahead. Okay. And I also should mention, as you heard from the beginning of the meeting, Jeff Hammond from Fresco is on the line as well. So if you have any questions for him, he'll be, he'll be able to answer those. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, you can see the plan up in front of you. That's just the big picture overall plan. I didn't want to burden the uh, IT support uh, or the IT system, I should say, with the whole plan set. So I've just got a brief, a few plans together that we might need to reference. Um, so comment number one is just uh, about the, the um, high capacity calculations. They were just acknowledging that they appear to be acceptable, so we had no action on this one required. Um, moving on to comment number two, there was some confusion at the last planning commission meeting. Um, we initially had proposed a 50-foot building height at the previous submission. It, 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 there was a question raised of whether or not the prior zoning relief granted would be sufficient to cover that because the ordinance only permitted a 35 foot building height. So some research was done. Uh, we were informed that the prior ordinance was specific to that case and it does not include, it's not a blanket approval for the whole site. So in response to that, Fresco has decided to scale back their, the height of their building to a, a, 
a permitted height of 35 feet maximum. And, and practically speaking, what that what that's going to be is it's going to match. I don't have a can't really point here. I don't have a laser pointer, but you see the building three expansion, which is the elongated expansion that runs left and right on the plan. The the height of that roof would match the existing facility. They're not planning to go higher than that. If in the future uh, building plans change and they did want to go higher, we would certainly uh, need to, you know. Get, get approval for that. But at this time, we're planning to stay within the limits of zoning and match the building heights. And and just, just for a thing, there is a, a clarification we have into the township as far as where that height is measured from, but whatever the case, we'll comply with the 35 foot, 35 foot uh, height requirement. Okay. Any, any questions on that? Should I, good to move on? I think you're good there. Okay, I mean, the summary of that is we'll comply. Uh, number three is, uh, goes off on a list of waivers, and we did add one deferral as well to that list. So some of these are we discussed last time. Uh, num letter A there, number 3A, uh, regarding the, the number of plantings. I did check with our landscape architect. We were 13 trees short of making the requirements. Um, so I think... Uh, you know, we're, we're close, but to, to put them in there, you, you did pretty much put put the trees wherever they can go in, in the, you know, the recommended uh, fashion. Um, so those were 13 trees short. I think that was a question last time. So your, your comments on that. Did we, did we make comment on that uh, as to whether we give a little leniency? I don't remember the conversation we had on this. This, this is Steve. I think at, at last meeting we we wanted to know what the extent of the shortage was. Now they've provided that thirteen right. trees. This is really, I believe, the rear parking areas where it's difficult to get trees around the perimeter of the parking where you normally would put them because the parking is up against the the buildings effectively. Gotcha. Um, do we get a? Uh, a fee in lieu of for the trees that don't go in. That's always a discussion with staff. Yes. Okay. So if we uh, if we allow this, there's going to be discussion about the fee in lieu of for the trees that don't go in. Uh, any input from the other members on this? John, I'm this is Tim. Time. Is I? Go ahead, Tim. So okay, uh, I was just I, based on our last meeting. I think we were. You know, somewhat comfortable with the fact that they'd put in as many trees as they could, but yet, you know, the fee in lieu of discussion would probably need to be had. This is Andy. I don't have any, I have no further input. All right. Well, hearing from anyone else, uh, I think PC is probably willing to. Uh, Waive that, uh, just knowing that there's going to be discussion about the fee and loan. Right, and that was anticipated. So we, we, I don't. Jeff's on the line. He can correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't believe there's an issue with that. Okay. Okay. The, the if we're ready to move on. The next waiver request was for the traffic study, and uh, just an update to this one. Previously, we had stated that there was no a net zero increase in employee traffic and a nominal uh, additional three trucks per day. There has been an update. We just learned about this. Um, there is going to be a small increase in employees. It's going to be 10 or less. We don't know how many yet, but just to correct the record, we did want to let you know about that. The uh, motivation and justification behind the waiver that we don't feel the study uh, would be needed. It's still a very de minimis impact. So our, our request would be the same for a waiver to that item for the same exact reasons. It's just going to be not a zero, in, a zero amount of uh, employees, it would be a nominal increase of 10 or less. Okay. So I think at, at our last meeting, we, we basically agreed with that, but Steve had brought up the point that this is probably the third project where we've waived traffic studies. So I would assume the next time you come in, if you come in with another project, we're probably going to want to see something. Uh, cause you, every time you have a, a project, you're adding a couple of, a couple of trucks and a couple of employees. So the, the aggregate is increasing. So if you come in with another project after this one, I'm probably gonna probably gonna require that. 
I think is what the, that's what the discussion we had at last meeting. So I, that being said, uh, does anyone have a problem waiving the traffic study for this problem? Mr. John, I don't. Alex, I don't. Andy, no. Tim, no. Okay, ready to move on? Uh, you know what? I My feed went out on me again. I didn't hear anybody's comments, but I'm assuming everybody was fine with it. Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, street improvements. Okay, street improvements, uh, also requesting a waiver for that, like we discussed last time, for basically the same reasons. Right. Our, uh, our improvements are way in the back of the facility, you know, minimal increase to traffic. So we, for the same justifications, basically, um, we're requesting a waiver for this, this roadway improvements as well. Okay. Um, and again, you might have to rethink that if you do another project, but uh, I think we had agreed at the last meeting that uh, we were willing to waive. Uh, any, yep. any input? I'm just going to run through the planning commission. Tim, you have any input on this? Andy, no. Tim, no. That that was my recollection too. That if uh, the next project, there would be probably some consideration given all these. Right. Alex, no. John, no. Okay. Sorry for taking so much time on these things, but I want to make sure we're getting it covered. Um, so D. Yes. So th that was the waiver for the perimeter fencing around the basin. Uh, it's, it's located kind of on the lower left corner of the black and white plan there. It's indicated by a dashed line. And if it's possible to advance the, the slides to add two color photos at the end of the presentation that illustrate, if we can start on the first, not that one, the next one, please. Right there. This is the plan view of that area just to provide a little bit of a graphic and there is a, a kind of a street view a, a ground level shot next but to start on this plan the uh the red oval there is approximate location of where the stormwater facility is located and it's indicating the solid yellow line indicates the line of sight from the play area of the church and then the dashed yellow line indicates the line of sight from the ground which you'll see clearly in a minute um it's about 400 feet from there, there is vegetation. Uh, the, the the photo that we're about to see, if, if you don't mind, we can come back to this, but if you don't mind going to the next ground level photo. This is standing behind, you know, to, to the viewer's back would be the church building, looking through the playground. And what you see there on the kind of the top left-hand corner, there's a red leader pointing to it, is the, the loading dock, that last stall of the loading dock, which is in the line of sight. And uh, you can see where the other leader just to the right is, is the approximate location of the basin. And this was, the photo was taken in April. So there's not a lot of foliage on the trees, not a lot of leaves. Um, it, it doesn't appear to be very visible, if visible at all. And so based on the distance um, and the lack of visibility, uh, the thought is that that would not entice uh, the children or whoever to, to run up in the basin. I mean, there is a basin there now. It's been there for quite some time. But those are just some items for your consideration if you if you would agree with that or if you feel differently. Um, yeah, this is Chris. I, I appreciate you doing that because I, I really had no idea how close it was. And this, you know, this does show a, a good deal of distance and and uh, lack of visibility. So I, I think I'd be all right uh, waving the fence. Zandy, I'm, I'm, I'd still like to see the fence. I'd be interested to hear what the other planning commissioners uh, would like, you know, say about that. This is Alex, and I agree with you, Andy. I think it's just prudent. This is John. I, this I is agree. Tim. Go ahead, Tim. No, that's right. I, this is Tim. I, I really have no... Uh, you know, one way or the other. I mean, whatever the commission, the, the commission decides, I, I think it's it's already there. It's existing. There hasn't been any issues yet. At the same time, you know, it is somewhat prudent, but uh, I would be comfortable um, either way. 
All right. Well, it sounds like uh, Planning Commission would like to see fence. Okay. Um, I, I uh, Jeff, if I don't, if we can talk with Jeff about that. I don't think that's. We can just go ahead and propose that on the next plan revision. Yeah, I don't uh, think that's an issue. We we can do that. Right. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you. Well, thank you. If, if I could just chime in here, you know, we'll we'll consider options. That the standard option has always been like a, a split rail type fence with wire wire mesh backing, but some people have done that. that, that you know, an aluminum fence or, or some other options. Um, it's generally a low, like a four foot fence. Not, it's not a foot high cyclone fence with barbed wire. So this is Alex. I'd even be willing to consider something like a, um, a thorny hedgerow or something like that. Okay. Well, I appreciate the consideration and we will investigate some of those options and then, um, you know, discuss those with Steve as needed and go from there. So but we'll, we'll do something there. Yeah. So planning commission wants some type of protection around there. Right. No, we hear, we hear you. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll work something up and get it over to Steve on that. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Think kid proof. Okay. Okay, the next item is uh, is, a, is a new, wait, I think that's right. The next item, letter E, is a, is a new addition since the last planning commission uh, meeting, what had occurred there. Uh, there's a, um, a requirement for a 20% of the site to be covered with covered in, in woodlands. And um, long story short, the, the site as proposed meets the requirement. We're just over 20%, but when the reserve parking area, if and when that were ever to be constructed, the site would no longer meet that requirement for the 20% of afforestation. So our proposal, or excuse me, our request is for a deferral to that item with the justification that it meets the requirement now, but if and when the reserve parking area were constructed, um, we would agree to either uh, Pro, pro, uh, provide the additional woodland areas to meet the 20% or pay a fee in lieu of whichever would be most prudent at the time. Uh, Steve, have we ever done that before? We, we have not, but the reforestation is an, is a relatively newer requirement. Um, we already have, will have an amended, uh, a, you know, a, a, I'm sorry, I'll have a recorded agreement for the reserve parking area. So it's not that much of a stretch to add some extra conditions into that agreement. Yeah, I mean, if we can do that without getting tangled up, I would support that. This is Alex. My only thought might be to show that there's an area for reforestation if we choose not to take the fee in lieu of as maybe a proposed or future reforestation? Yeah, there's certainly, this is Steve, there's certainly area on the, on the, uh, if you're going in the entrance, entrance road from uh, state road on the right hand side, where we're going to talk about later some temporary parking, but that's more or less an open area uh, on that side of the entrance that could support trees if they, ultimately they were required to be installed. If, if I can chime in here real quick on that, there is a, a, a master plan. It's not a formal plan. It hasn't been anything of any, any standing whatsoever, but in our, the master plan that we prepared for Fresco, we did have some potential future development over there. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I don't think there'd be any harm in looking in light of that. We have a master plan so we could look and see if we can identify some areas uh, based on that and, you know, just a, a potential. I mean, we wouldn't know until we got there as far as what would make the most sense, but we could identify some areas, um, you know, to to kind of plan for if that would be satisfactory. That was kind of my thinking, just to be able to show the, the potential is there, even if it's never used. Right. This is Tim. I'm comfortable with that. 
Yeah, that's not a problem at all. We can do that and we'll identify some areas of, for the future of where we could possibly put that and hopefully that won't be an issue at all. Yeah, sounds good. Um, moving on, now there was a, a, a slew of, the letter F is lumped together, a slew of uh, stormwater items, things like the basin bottom slope, and I, I'm forgetting, I do have the waiver request letter here, if we could pull up if we need to. Um, if you'd like, we can go through those one by one, or we can lump them all together if um, just apparently Steve was no had no objections to them. Yeah, I think we could leave them lumped together, and you're right, I have no objections to them. So we're going to go through your waiver request letter, so we'll make sure we note that uh, Steve's fine with all the all the uh, other requests uh, listed uh, here on F. Um, you want to go to G here? Uh, G is just about the contribution uh, in lieu of wage improvements. We acknowledge that that will be a discussion point and uh, that that will be that's coming. And so we acknowledge that okay. and expect that. Uh, number four, um, parking area calculation. So um, the, this comment warrants a little explanation. Uh, part of the one of the comments at the last meeting was what about parking during construction? Because if, it, if it's possible to go back to the first slide with the overall black and white plan, that might be helpful to look at because you can see all the construction. It's a pretty substantial project. It never looks like much on a large scale plan, but it's it's a big, quite a bit of excavation and, and work gonna be done back there. And, um, and all the part, most the majority of the parking, or at least a good portion of the, of the existing parking is gonna be stepped on. And so we're gonna need a place to park employees and staff during the construction process. So the area we've identified after you know much deliberation, we explored all kinds of options um, had a whole matrix of possibilities there. And the one that seemed to be the most feasible and, and had the most benefits was to provide, and you can see it's a little black note in the upper right-hand corner, the same area we were talking about before, um, right when uh, the driveway splits off into two roads, immediately to the right as you're pulling into the site, that open area, we have a temporary parking area slated for 124 vehicles there, which would, is proposed to be the... Um, the parking during construction. And so the particular comment here is, uh, I, I think it was just a typo on our plans. I accidentally specified the wrong product. I had specified a product called Grass Pave, which is actually what I had in mind from a previous project. In fact, it wasn't Grass Pave we're proposing, it's Grass Guard, it's a completely different thing. What it is is a vinyl mesh that's rolled out and stapled with pins to the grass. It doesn't require disturbance of the grass. Uh, it just requires a mowing of the grass pretty tight. You, you lay down the mesh, um, you pin it, and then allow the grass to grow up through the webbing. And that produces a stable area. There's a, you know, they use it maybe tailgate areas and things like that. So our proposal would be to use that because of the, it wouldn't have a stormwater impact that would be anything measurable. And it would be, I mean, it's, it's not cheap, but it's it seemed to be the best option considering everything else. So the, the comment here was specifically about that it might require a stone subbase. The grass paved product absolutely requires a stone subbase, but grass guard does not. It's just a simple surface application and the grass grows up through it, like I said before. And uh, there's another part to that, but I'll pause for a second for comments. What, what was the name of the, the matting? It's called Grass Guard. Grass Guard. HD is the particular product line. And we, we would specify that as an or equal or approved equal, I should say. Uh, we didn't bother. I mean, we did get some budget pricing, but we didn't want to get into the price shopping so much now. So I I was very clear with them that this is going to be specified or equal. So if there's an, an equivalent product, um, we would we would go with the best price, certainly. Right. Steve, do you know anything about the product? I do not know that product in particular. Um, we'll certainly look into it. I could talk to Scott about it. Uh, again, our, our our concern is just how much disturbance is needed to to install this, and um, if there's if it's as 
he explained it, it would seem ideal for this location. Uh, our second question is just depending on the time of the year, is it a product that could be maintained in the winter if you end up going over a winter season? I could address that if, if you're ready for that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the over the winter, I mean, admittedly, there's not a lot of, if you look on the website for this product, you don't see a lot of winter applications. I mean, this is a, I think, uh, you know, tailgate areas for a college, a college campus in Louisiana or something like that. It's, and they do a lot of work. So we did pr propose on the, on the plan, we did provide some notes to the plan to, I, to address winter maintenance operations. Um, things, it's really just practical common sense, like for plowing, uh, we had delineated the spaces with or with basically construction fencing so people know where to bring the nose of their vehicle into and um, during plowing we specified things like removal of the the fencing to plow the the snow out of the way also things like you know very common sense lifting the blade up so we don't gouge it out and, and i think a lot of the thing that's going to determine the success of this is if we get it planted early you know even this year I start growing up so it's it's not going to be like there's pieces of plastic that a plow blade can stick on if it's if it's mature enough so it's the key to that is early you know an early installation allowing for grass growth however even with that said and even with the utmost of care you know we realize there could be situations where perhaps the the matting might come up or something like that so our recommendation on the on the plan specifies keeping some extra pieces of the matting on on hand that they could install on an as needed basis. But it's going to be is, you know, one of those things we're going to have to just deal with throughout the construction process. But with some care, um, we do believe it's workable, it'll be an acceptable solution. You is, there an, is there an estimation on the, the timeline of construction? You know, you're looking at 12 months, I, 18 months? As far as the, the wind, the season? Uh, yeah. No, as, as far as the overall construction for these additions, so you'll get people in the back into the back parking lots. Yeah, I'm, I'm figuring at least a year. It, it might be about a year. It might be more, but, I'm, you know, the building part of it, I, I'm a little, I don't want to speak out of turn there. I'm not, I'm not as familiar with that. But it, it, for, for site work, um, you know, it's all going to be going. I don't know how the schedule is going to go, but I, I would plan on a year would be a, probably a good number for planning. Steve, would that parking area count towards disturbed area for NPDS purposes and whatnot? That's what they're trying hard to avoid by not by doing as minimal construction as possible. Uh, ultimately, that's going to be up to uh, the conservation district to decide. The, the cheapest thing would be to do a stone parking lot, but that would have that would have affected our stormwater. And even if we laid it right on top, I don't know if that would count as disturbance or not. So this is, again, it's not a cheap option, but we feel it's the best option to minimize stormwater impacts and still provide the stability needed for the duration of construction. Hmm. Um. And what what is the actual area that you're you're talking? Let's see. It's 124 spaces. I can. I'm just going to pull that up real quick. I think it's on the plan. Okay, 124 spaces. Don't worry, I'll, I'll grab an area. I'll just scale it real quick. It'll take me about 20 seconds. All right. Two, two, seven. Eight, three. Oh, 
second. 227830. It's a little over five acres, about five and a quarter acres. And it, it, it wouldn't have any disturbance. The only disturbance would be the pin going into the ground. And it, it once you put it in there, it stays there. It doesn't come up again. Right. Uh, any thoughts from the other members? This is John. I don't have any other questions. This is Alex. I'll defer to Steve in the uh, conservation district on that. This is Steve. I, I obviously have to look at this particular product because I did not see that yet. Um, and we'll probably have a discussion with the conservation district. But beyond that, I mean, the only other thing that I could think of is from the townships end, we might want to have a discussion with the solicitor. I don't know that there's any liability from the townships point if this can't be maintained as nice as it as it should be it's a it's a private parking area provided by the employer for their employees and i don't know that the township has to be involved in it at all from that that standpoint all right so. this is this is timmy i'm i mean i'm fine with it. if they you know if the uh, conservation district and steve are okay with it and uh you know it satisfies the uh the need of stabilization i'm fine with that this is andy same All right, yeah, I would agree with that statement as well. So we'll wait to hear back from what you folks come up with. Okay. <clears throat> so that takes care of that. Um, the letter B there of comment number four is just speaking about a um, an, an agreement for the parking, which Steve had just referred to. And that would basically, in addition to, uh, basically when the, res when the res I'm sorry, different parking, the reserve parking area, once it's an agreement that would state that if and when the reserve parking area uh, would be constructed, with that would come certain necessary improvements, such as stormwater management improvements, landscaping, and things like that, uh, well, as well as the afforestation we discussed earlier. So there's we understand that Fresco would not have an objection to entering into that agreement. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I'm just going to move on. Stop me if you want to discuss anything else. Number five uh, is regarding our, we did contact Mark Fournier from the Telford Borough Authority, had several discussions with him. Uh, we have not made initial submission to them yet. We're trying to get together some preliminary information on what the sewer demand is. It's not, not a simple calculation and it's really not expected to be anything significant, but there we're still trying to pull together some of the base documentation but um, we, we will uh, make that submission. We've done some, a lot of unofficial coordination with Mark. He's kind of aware, but nothing official. We want to get official submission into him. And once we get their approval, uh, we will forward that to the township. Uh, we don't foresee any issues with that. The, um, there will be either a planning module or a waiver. We'll, we realize we'll have to get that to you as well. That'll come as kind of the, the next car in the line after we make our submission. But um, we'll follow through with that. Again, these are these are just process items. Nothing that we feel is going to be a problem. I'll just mention that we did make substantial improvements to the based on Mark Mark's uh, feedback. We made substantial improvements from the last revision uh, to include uh, significant sanitary sewer uh, in lines in the back there to to really not only provide for the current facility, but also for uh, any future expansions and also to improve the lateral for building four, which is the, the building, the, the lowermost part of the plan, which actually currently runs underneath a couple of the buildings. We're gonna reroute that and, and basically do it the right way. So we're, we're kind of scoring on three, three areas there with the sewer. So there's a significant infrastructure being proposed with that, that um, the, the TBA will, will have to review obviously, but uh, I don't want to speak for Mark. I, I won't. I, I thought he was favorable to it, but I, you know, let him review it first before I say anything officially. Okay. But that, that's the process. We don't see it to be an issue. It just we've got a little more work to do there. Out, an outside agency approval. Okay. Number six, uh, regarding stormwater, there was a water quality number at letter A there 
a water quality appendix was inadvertently admitted from the report. We forwarded that to Steve. I don't expect he has had, had time to review that yet. Um, but if he had any comments, you could welcome to obviously he'll, he'll comment on that. But it's uh, the, the, the information was forwarded already. Um, and we also understand that there'll be an operation and maintenance agreement. And the uh, Fresco would not object to that. Okay. It, now, number seven, we have made our submission to the Bucks County Conservation District. We did get a, a administrative comments back from them, and we're planning to address those uh, by the end of the month at the latest, hopefully sooner, and get that back in there. Um, you know, so we're gonna we're gonna work through those comments, and once we get that approval, we'll we'll forward that to the township. Okay. Uh, number eight. Uh, let's see. The uh, we're proposing fees in lieu of de dedication of recreational land. Uh, we calculated. Steve confirmed a seventy-five hundred dollar uh, fee for that, and Fresco has no issues to provide the re the required fee. Okay. Okay. We are also in contact with Joe Roush, the fire marshal, regarding the um, the fire service. Initially, there was some discussion of a fire hydrant. After some back and forth, uh, he he was acceptable to us providing a fire department connection on the end of building three. So that's a will comply. We will provide that as part of the, the building design. Or I should say the building contractor will provide that as part of that their design package. Okay. Number 10, uh, the secure, we did prepare a security cost estimate that was submitted. I understand it's still under review. So once we receive any comments from that, we can address that. And, um, you know, had no problem with the security agreement, we'll enter into that agreement as well. <clears throat> At number 11 is really just a few miscellaneous engineering and drafting comments. Um, actually, there was very few changes that are actually would affect the plans. As a matter of fact, we received our letter on Friday of last week. And we're already, we didn't resubmit the plans, but we're done. We could, we could have submitted them today if we needed to. We can literally submit them tomorrow. So really there's nothing else that, you know, subject to everyone's concurrence, the Steve's review and concurrence. The plans, nothing else that would affect the plans unless a new comment comes up is from this, you know, today's, tonight's discussion. But we've, I, this is a will comply for everything in number 11. Um, things like the matter drafting thing with removing the waiver requests. We referenced the latest plan. Um, we added a, a note for zero cutoff fixtures on the lighting plan. Uh, we provided uh, temporary staking for the landscaping. And we're also added construction fencing along the church property. Very simple adds to the plan and um, we'll comply with all those. So, so really from a plan standpoint, um, we feel we're clean as a whistle. And um, if the waivers are acceptable, uh, number 12 is just a comment just saying, um, you know, the right to make more comments and uh, and things like that. So I guess with, with that said, I mean, we realize, you know, we have the, the TBA approval to still obtain and we have the conservation district, the MPDS permit to still obtain. Um, I don't know what your the pleasure of the planning commission is. Uh, certainly your call, obviously. Um, but we feel that these are these are not showstoppers. These are outside agency approvals. If it's if it's agreeable with you, I would respectively ask you to um, to grant a conditional recommendation of approval, and would would certainly uh, continue to work and be responsive to the township. Steve, with all the the little outstanding things, are I mean, are we safe to do a conditional preliminary final? Yes, the little outstanding things aren't going to change any of the layout on the plan or any zoning issues okay um so we do have to planning commission has to approve the waiver request letter um what, one comment on that waiver request letter uh the one uh i guess there's one dated may 12th which is today but i picked this packet up over the weekend is that just uh an oversight or is there what, what's going on I, I, 
I'm sorry. I, I prepared that letter last week. I probably should have dated it the day I did the letter. I was just thinking the date of the meeting was what I should date it, but it's um, that's the most current things. We had we had a little mix up with a couple letters. I didn't get all the waivers in, so I did a cleanup letter to make sure they all got in one letter. So that was just a little error on my part. But they're all they're in the May 12th letter has all the waivers that we discussed today. Okay. Thank you. And the what was the item that we had talked about earlier that Steve was happy to waive everything? Steve, was there any concern about the proposed temporary parking? This is Alex. Uh, my only concern was one, I wanted to see the product to see that it was truly going to be pervious and the second question was the the you know maintenance of it. So both of those I think are under you know take under advisement, but I think the concept is okay. I just want to be comfortable with the how they're executing it. It will so yeah sorry. Are, are we are we comfortable to waive that at this point? To waive. Oh, so no. My bad. Yeah, you're not waiving anything with respect to the temporary parking. Correct. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, and technically, it's not an ordinance issue. It's just we, you know, we identified through our discussions that they were in need of somewhere to park while construction was ongoing. So right. that's what they're addressing. I guess the other thing I'm right. seeing in the waiver letter is the one about the fencing, which we thought should be incorporated in some way, that one basin. Right. That would we wouldn't get approval for that particular waiver. We would we would comply with that one put to the ordinance or whatever is worked right. out. Right. That was number ten on the request. Number ten, yeah. So I mean, make that as part of the motion that we accept all waivers except number ten on the on the waiver request sheet. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if it's ten or eleven because eleven also deals with safety fencing. Okay, I think it's actually both. It's um, it it would be it would be both because it's different different storm events, but it's. It's still fencing that's required, so it would be ten and eleven. Right, same area, two different mm -hmm. criteria, same area. Yeah, I mean, would that make sense to approve this letter uh, rejecting ten and eleven? I think that Alex, I'd be okay with that. This right, is Tim. Well, yeah, I'd be okay with that as well. All right, so I guess I'd be looking for someone to make that motion. So the motion, the motion is this is Tim. So the motion is to accept uh, the waiver request letter, excluding items number ten and eleven. Yes. Okay, I'll make said motion. John, a second. second. Okay. John, a second. All in favor. Aye. This is Alex. Aye. Chris, aye. Tim, aye. John, aye. All right. I think we got everybody. Uh, so motion carries. Um, so I guess at this point, do we have everything covered uh, to... To vote to give them uh, preliminary final? Conditional preliminary final, right? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I think we're clear. Steve, you agree with that? I, this is Steve. Yes, I, I would agree. I don't think anything that's left on the plan or left to, to clean up in these comments are changing the plan at all that you need would need to see it again. All right, good. All right, so somebody want to make that motion? This is Andy. I'll make a motion for 
conditional preliminary final approval. This is Alex. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? John, aye. Alex, aye. Andy, aye. Tim, aye. Chris, aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone. You got it. Congratulations. Uh, good luck. To you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye bye. See ya. Have a good night. All right. So next on the agenda is old business. Um, I don't think we had any old business. A um, couple of things to mention in new business. Um, we all were forwarded the East Rock Hill comprehensive plan that they wanted us to review. I, uh, I just breezed through their recommendations list, which they pretty much the things formatted, you know, the same as ours. Uh, and having gone through their uh, recommendation, future recommendations list, I was, I didn't see anything that jumped out at me to not say it was good to go. I don't know if anybody else had a chance to review or not. Chris, I'd agree. I, I took a quick look at it and basically looking at their checklist of recommendations. I mean, they had 13 and I think half of them were almost identical to what we had and the rest I saw no issue with. This is Steve. I don't think there's any zoning changes or any other significant changes in that comp plan. Right. I look, this is Tim. I looked at it briefly, but not enough to make any kind of comments about. Yeah. This is John. I, I read through it. I didn't see any issues. So we're we all comfortable to say no comments. Oh, I'm sorry. Andy, go ahead. I'm sorry. N no comments. Okay. So are we comfortable to comfortable enough to tell the supervisors that we looked at it and we saw no issues? I'd agree, Alex. Uh, Tim, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Sean, I agree. Andy, yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll mention that uh, next week in the report. Um, the other new business is the alternate position. Um, Greg, the supervisors uh, agreed to uh, to go ahead with the alternate member to the planning commission, and they advertised uh, that the position was open. Um, so that was advertised after the supervisors' meeting, and I, I think they need to leave it advertised for at least thirty days. So at the end of the thirty days, so at our next meeting, we'll probably have have. Uh, a list we have one one interested party and no other so far so see if anybody comes up in the next before the next meeting and then we can uh, we can have discussion on that at our next meeting and, and make the recommendation to the supervisors and that is all i had how about uh do we have a review or uh not the review the uh, yeah, engineering report engineering report thank you hi, hi. Um, there's nothing too exciting on here, but just a few things to note. Um, you see, I put some additional asterisks on some of the deadlines. With with the whole COVID situation, there was a there was a law passed that extended everybody's time period, and and all these developers were notified. I just haven't worked out what their new dates are. Sooner or later, okay. we'll we'll get the new dates straightened out. But Mary's been on top of been on top of that, and all. Just for an FYI, we do have uh, Snyder resubmitted a plan. I'm not sure what it is. It's several sheets, but I think it's still basically a sketch plan to talk about that length of that cul-de-sac street. We've talked to the fire company. I directed him to talk to the fire company, but I don't. He never talked to me again, so I, I don't know what his discussions were with the fire company and exactly what he wants to talk about. But we'll try to figure that out. And also. Uh, remember the Westco property uh, that we've been asking what's going on for years? Uh, yeah. Well, he sold it to a contractor, to a roofing contractor. Uh, and of course, they don't like the building layout that he proposed. So they're submitting a revised plan to modify the building layout on the property. 
Huh. Who, Who is it? it? Yeah. What, what roofing contractor? You know, I don't, I don't remember the name of the name of them right now. Okay. Anything else going on? Uh, lots of stuff going on, but that's it for you. Oh, I guess one other just tidbit too. We have a couple plans that are coming up to be recorded, like the Kratz plan. So, uh, you may get contacted by the office to come by to sign them sometime after we figure out how we're signing plans since right. we're not having in-person meetings. So just then I'll you bring my own it. pen. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah, um, also real quick for Greg and Sherry, I just wanted to let you know when I picked up my packet, there was a check in the planning commission mailbox to the township. So I figured it's probably going to be lost there for at least a month if no one goes and looks for it. Okay, okay. thank you for letting me know. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. So, all I, right. I, <laughs> I will tell Linda to grab it tomorrow. <laughs> all right. Any other uh, business we need to discuss? If not, uh, is there any public comment? There is no public comment. Okay, with no public comment, I would look for a motion to adjourn. This is Andy on that motion. Alex, I'll second, second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, see you somewhere sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Good night, Have a good everybody. night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.